Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Dungeon Hunter. Now if you don't know about this series there's Dungeon Hunter 1, Dungeon Hunter 2, Dungeon Hunter 3, Dungeon Hunter 4, and this game that I'm logged into Dungeon Hunter 5. And yes, 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 Dungeon Hunter 6 is in production right now, waiting to see what it is going to be. Now, if you ask me, Aaron, what kind of a game is this? I would say it is an isometric action RPG that leans more towards the rogue light elements. And today we're going to take a look at this game. Also talk about some nostalgia for the series. Also, what we want to see in Dungeon Hunter 6. Now, if I had to compare this game to a current game that you might be playing, this does feel kind of Torchlight Infinite, but a little older than Torchlight Infinite because this game has been out for a little bit. You've got those kind of wow, torchlight colors and visuals. This game is also a dungeon hunter, which means it's almost like you're doing maps over and over and over again, and the story progresses through the said maps. So we're going to take a look at Dungeon Hunter today, and I hope you enjoy this video. Right now we're logged in to my character. And what I want to talk about first is character customization, which is very important inside of a game like this. When you go over to inventory, you have your equipment, crafting, evolution, fusion, transmute, mastery, spell, and your collection. And we're going to go into info first. So this is your actual character. And the visuals on your character and how they interact is based upon this click right here. This would be your gear. Okay, we're starting off with gear. And when you click on this, these are the different characters. And if I actually click on a different character and equip, you will notice that my character actually changes and how they function actually change. So in here, I want to pick the strongest character that I have, one current triple A character. So that is who we are going to use. Then you have on here, you actually have what weapons you're going to use, slot one and slot two. We're going to be using a bow as our main attack and then a sword as our secondary. And everything has different rarities, different power scores, and each weapon actually will function differently when you are attacking. Go over here, you've got your back piece, which also is a skill. So your skills are attached to your equipment. So if you use a different, if you use a different back piece, it will actually give you a different skill. Then on here, you have basically like your power up. Since I'm a shooter, mainly I'm using lightning, I'm using lightning. It's a lightning shot and then belt is not unlocked. Now, when it comes to character customization, like I said, there is a bunch in here. You have trinkets that I have yet to unlock for this character. OK, you can optimize your character based upon what you want them to focus on. Right now, I'm just going balanced. You have runes that you are going to unlock later on as well. So lots of different stuff and companions, which again, I have not unlocked. You've got your tool tips, you've got all your global attacks, your health, and all the different things that you need to know while you traverse this area. And what's cool is that you could have lots of different loadouts. So it's like loadout, let's get off trinkets. So this is my current loadout. You could have loadout two, loadout three, loadout four, loadout five, loadout six, loadout seven, and all the different loadouts you want. So. That's also nice. And then when you're actually playing the game, you could swap weapons really, really quickly, which I will show you. That is the character customization. Now, on top of that, there's tons of things you could do. You could fuse items together. So, For example, let's take our armor right here. We can go in here and we could click on a couple of these select items. And we're going to get a bonus because we're fusing of the same rarity. This is going to cost us 25,000 gold. We're going to go from level one to level 38 and our armor is going to improve. We are going to fuse this. Getting stronger. Look at that. There's a lot of levels. Super fusion complete. There we go. And it shows the stat increases that we got for that fusion. And I could keep doing this. I could literally 
So I wanted to put all of these in there. Cost 99,000 gold, which I have enough for, and we get another 12 points. But we're not going to do that because those aren't the right rarity. And in here, you could see all of your stuff broken down, including my pets that I have. Just can't use them yet. Okay. You've got different evolutions. So it shows what the character will look like if you were able to evolve them. Certainly looks very different, but these are the materials that I would need. And then on here, you have crafting. And crafting is pretty straightforward. For your gear, you can click on the said items for what you want to craft. And then in here, it'll tell you what you need to find inside of the world. So it's got a very stellar crafting system. Game's very in-depth, okay? Now, what is there actually to do inside of Dungeon Hunter? Well, you got your solo. This would be like your campaign. You've got events, and they're right over here. Special Easter and Legendary Hunt. You've got Arena if you're a PvP, or you've got Co-op if you like playing online. Trial of the Elements is a special feature. You've got Dungeons. It's a little different. Then you got Strongholds. And these are kind of like raids. So we're just going to go into a basic mission. Oh, and you have Seasons. Currently on Season uh, 5. Now, when you look at this, this is what reminds me of that Mario Brothers, you know, Angry Birds style inside of Dungeon Hunter. So you go through and you could replay the same areas because there's four different challenges that you could go through. And right now I'm just going through the first one on all of them. So we're going to go over to 14 because I have not played this yet. And let's do a run. The force of undead are marching towards the War Mage Academy Hall of Archives. We are placing a bounty on each Fully voice acted. of those undead. They must not gain access to those archives. Ooh. They contain something dangerous? It is a repository of the most powerful portal and gate spells known to exist. If the undead get a hold of those spells, whosoever leads them will be able to summon far worse than mere spirits and undead. Oh no. So right now I can only play normal. We're going to go in right now. Bring in a friend. And let's do it. Right. Now, what I would like to see for Dungeon Hunter 6 is I want to see an update on visuals. Visuals are OK. This is currently on max settings, but I want to see an update on visuals. And I want to see a little bit kind of like a passive tree or maybe like an actual inventory where, you know, you put on the helmet, you put on the chest, something you would see in a classical ARPG. my road dog with me so if you ever played Wolsen you kind of got that roll for your character that just always comes back I've never played this level before oh, am I supposed to go in there yes the Take that! You have to help us break through! The undead have blocked our path to the archives! You have to help us break through! Now you could zoom out. You can get in. This is as close as you could get. Pretty close. And look how far out you could pull it. That's a pretty good camera options. I like it right about there. Take that! Hot swap your item or hot swap your weapons. Back in shooting. Give me all that. the wrong back piece equipped right now. Take that!
dungeon run done. Boom, boom, boom. Tell me the gear I collected during the run. I got an E level sword. And a couple of bows. None of these three are better than what I currently have. But I want this person to now be my ally. No. No, thank you. And then we are back here. So I can go back into solo. Now 14 is done. We are moving on up to 15. I don't actually want to play 15 right now. So dungeon hunters, okay? Million things to do inside of the game, but really what this video is about is the series, Dungeon Hunters 1 through 5, and kind of the importance. These games have been made over the last 20 years. And anytime you have something in the genre that helps solidify action RPGs, which helps isometric hack and slash, it is a series that I can get behind. Now for Dungeon Hunter 6, like I said, I'm hoping we see a visual improvement, which I'm sure they're going to do it. I want to see different character customization when it comes to gear that you collect. And then just some quality of life improvements when it comes to skills and gear. And I don't like how whenever I start a mission, I'm always fully zoomed in and then I have to manually zoom out. I would like to be able to set where I want my cameras. Just little things like that. But all in all, it is a fun game. There's tons of stuff to do. And I look forward to the future of Dungeon Hunter. Fairly short video today. I want to know your thoughts. Have you ever taken part in Dungeon Hunter 1 through Dungeon Hunter 5? And do you have high hopes for the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. To ask at the end of this video, ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day. You make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 59 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. Dungeon Hunter 5. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Erin, out.